katarabashete ko robo shende katarabashete ko robo shete o robo shende katarabande ko robo shete ko raba baba bashinde ko robo shete katarabasata ko raba baba shende ko robo shete katarabasata oh we bless you God this morning ye ko robo shete katarabasata oh we worship your holy name this morning God hallelujah we welcome you into this place, Lord God. We bless you, God. We bless you, God. We surrender to you this morning, God. Lord, we surrender this service to you this morning, God. It is not about us. We say, have your way, God. This is your service, God. This is your kingdom. Have your way in this place in Jesus' name. Father, we ask and we welcome you to just saturate the atmosphere, Father God. Oh, Robo Shinda Katarabasata. Send down your presence. Let your presence be felt in this place this morning. Let the tangible presence of God be and rest and reside in this place this morning, God. We give you glory, God. Father, I ask even now, God, anything in the atmosphere that is not of you, God, we move. Move it out of the way in Jesus' name. We command it to go, Father, so there is no hindrance between you and us this morning and what you desire to do this morning, God. I cry out to you, God, that you are a loving God, that you are a good God, and there is nothing too hard for you. We just give you every burden, Father God. We give you every everything that's been weighing us down this week, God, everything that's been crossing our mind over and over again, Father, we release those things to you right now in Jesus' name. Father, we nail to the cross of Christ any sin and trespass, God, anything we may have thought or said against someone else, God, against your servants, against your people, God. Lord, we know that we need to love like you. So this morning, we ask for your forgiveness, God. Wash us fresh, Lord God. Oh, search our hearts, God, and see if there be any wicked way in us, Father. We pray that you would just uproot every single thing that is not like you so that your word can come forth this morning, God. Lord, we just bless all of those joining us near and far, God. Lord, I pray that you would just bless them, God. Just send your anointing on this word. As Pastor Calvin comes forward with his word this morning, Father, we pray that you would just send down the fire, Father God, that it would pierce the hearts of your people, that it will take root, and we will begin to walk in it in Jesus' name. I just thank you, God. I honor you this morning, God, for your manservant, God. I pray that you would just continually strengthen him, Father God. Everything that he pours out, God, just refill him in Jesus' name. Let his cup run over. Let there be no lack, Father God. Everything he desires, allow him to walk in it, God, for feeding your sheep, God. We thank you, God, for his faithfulness. We thank you for your faithfulness, God. We just thank you, God. City, that you are the final authority and there is none like you in all the earth. I thank you this morning, God. I pray for those who are on their way to service this morning, that you would just bless them, Father God, and steer them clear of any danger or any kind of accidents, God, that they would make safe passage to and from their destination. And we just thank you this morning. Even now, Father God, as I feel the heat of your presence, we just thank you this morning, God. I thank you this morning, God, for being everything that we need, God. Show us in, continuously showing us that we can put our trust in you and rely in you. I pray that you would just bless and keep all of those who eat and partake of this word this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I wanted to just share a brief testimony. Um, even as I was praying for God's presence to just come 
it, it took me back to yesterday. Yesterday was just, I, I don't even know how to explain the day, but I just woke up just feeling the presence of God. And I was praying for healing and not just praying, but I was seriously praying into that. And um, as my husband came downstairs and we started talking, I started in the spirit just seeing gold, gold flakes called coming down. That's what I called it. Later on in that day, I got a message from someone who said, oh, I've been seeing glitter. I've been seeing glitter. She didn't say if it was gold, but then it's like the spirit of the Lord was saying that was, that was glitter that you saw too. And it represents the, um, presence, the glory of God coming down. So I just believe that even as I'm praying for healing, not just for myself, not just for the people we're connected to, that God wants us in this season to just have the tangible presence of his glory so that it can heal us, so that it can uproot us, so uproot things out of us that don't belong so that it can deliver us. I just pray this morning that as I continue to press in and pray for the presence of God to just come and stay and reside with us, that you would do the same thing where you are so that you can get the breakthrough that God desires for you to have in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah, God. Good morning, Remnant family. Morning. We just thank you again for another time to come and worship and lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father God, I just thank you this morning, Lord God, for just bringing us through another week, Lord God. Yes. Father, I just thank you for your grace, your mercy, Lord God. Hallelujah. Your favor, Lord God, as you've kept us through the storms, Lord God. Every time the enemy tries to trip us up, every time the enemy tries to take away what you've poured into us, any time the enemy tries to keep us from our relationship with you, Lord God. Father, you keep us lifted up. You push us through, Lord God. And we are just thankful today, Lord God. We just lift up your name and say hallelujah, Lord hallelujah. God. Thank you, Jesus, for your grace, your mercy, your favor, Lord God. We thank you for your son, Lord God, who went to the cross on our behalf, Lord God. Father, we just thank you right now. As Pastor Linda was talking about healing, Lord God, Father, we thank you for the healing on mom yesterday, Lord God. We had a phone call that our mother went to the hospital, and we thank you for your grace, Lord God, your mercy, Lord God that she's home, we rebuke anything off of her or anyone else, Lord God, that may be ill, anyone else, Lord God, that is feeling under the weather, Lord God, anyone else that's in a hospital or an emergency room, anyone else that's in pain, Lord God, Father, we ask for deliverance right now in the name of Jesus. We ask you to snatch the enemy's power from him, Lord God, and free up your people, Lord God, so that they can experience you like they've never experienced you before. Father, rain down healing on your people, Lord God. Rain down healing on those that don't even know you, Lord God, so that they may come to know you through the healing, Lord God, through that grace. We rebuke the things that the doctors speak on people, Lord God. We declare in the name of Jesus that people are healed. Now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Let the power, let the blood just flow, Lord God. Let it go forth and heal the land, Lord God. Let it heal and break those bonds that have keep it, kept us separated, Lord God. On Sundays and throughout our lives, Lord God. Father, we speak healing in your land this morning, Lord God. Let your grace, your love just have its way. Spirit of the living God, we just ask that you just fall fresh on us this morning. Fall fresh on us this morning, Lord God. Move anything, Lord God, that would keep us from hearing from you. 
Not me, Lord God, but you, Lord God. Open up the hearts, the minds, the spirit. Let them hear from you, Lord God. Let something that I share, Lord God, touch them and change them and move them to a closer relationship with you. Let it move out those things, Lord God, that try to keep them in bondage, that try to keep them in ill health, Lord God, that try to keep them from doing what you've called them to do. We rebuke that this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak a spiritual release for your people, Lord God, that none would be kept from doing what you've called them to do, Lord God. Have your way with us this morning, Lord God. Have your way, Lord God. Have your way, Lord God. We just thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I just welcome everybody again, my brother, Coach, Sherman, my wife, Linda, everybody who's listening and will listen to this later on. Just thankful to be here another day. As I had said, my God, we got a phone call that Moms was in the hospital. We're grateful for her healing. We know other people have had pronunciations on them saying Mom's just been given a certain amount of time and, and the family is regretting that. I had a friend at work tell me that, and I told him, this is the time. We was just speaking into him and telling him, this is the time when God wants you to step up. Mm -hmm. He wants you to step up. The doctors can say anything they want, right. but God has the final say-so. Right. So if you surrendered your life to God, you can go wherever she is and speak and pray on her and change her situation. Right. All you got to do is surrender. We got to remember who the God is that we serve. Is man greater than our than the God we serve? I don't think so. That's right. <laughs> so we can't be distracted. He said he can't surrender right now because of the situation his mother is in. I said that's why God had us call you. He knew what you, your moms was going through. I didn't know anything like that. But he's telling you to step forward in faith now and watch and see what he does. So I pray that he got that word and he's acting on what God's saying instead of giving the enemy his place right. and letting him take advantage of his mother. Thank you, Jesus. We have to stand up and be the people that God called us to be. Mm -hmm. This morning, I just want to share a little something, praying that it blesses someone. This is a song. Y'all may know the words. I'm not going to sing it. I'm going to just read it. It says, Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me when I call? Is it true you are thinking of me? How you love me? It's amazing. Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me when I call? Is it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me? It's amazing. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. And he calls me friend. Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me when I call? Is it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me. It's amazing. So amazing. It's amazing. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God because he calls me friend. Amen. Amen. God Almighty, Lord of glory, you have called me friend. I am a friend of God because he has called me friend. Amen. I shared this this morning because I wanted to share from the book of Ecclesiastes, the fourth chapter, verses 9 through 12. And I'm going to the NIV. And in there, it, it, it talks about the value of a friend. Now, most of us know how our friends, some of us can de depend on them and how close we are. 
I think about one particular friend that's always been there. I've known him over 50 years. I don't even consider him a friend no more. He's just become a brother. I think about him when we was camping and the scouts and stuff, and, and my moms didn't always have the right equipment to send me out camping. And that friend, I would tell him that I'm cold. That particular friend would say, Calvin, go in my knapsack. Take, some, take my sweaters, take what you need and stuff so that you don't be cold and stuff. That's a friend taking care of you. That's why he became a brother. After 50 years, you're no longer a friend. You become family. And that's what God is trying to tell us. He doesn't want us to just stay in a friendship zone. He doesn't want us to just keep him off to the side for when we need him or when someone's calling and saying, I'm not feeling well. Can you pray for me? I need this job. Can you pray for me? I'm homeless now. Can you pray for me? He wants you to know that he's a friend who will always be there, who's always there for us. That friend who, like mine, who gave me sweaters to keep me warm when we were camping in the woods. That friend who always makes sure I didn't do anything that I wasn't supposed to in the streets. Calvin, you're not into this and stuff. We're going to go do what we got to do. We'll see you later. Always trying to keep me out of trouble and looking out for me because he loved me. That's why he's my brother today. He knows who I'm talking about. So I wanted to share from the book of Ecclesiastes, the fourth chapter, verses 9 through 12. And it's talking about the value of a friend. It says two are better than one because they have a great reward for their labor. If they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him, and a threefold cord is not easily broken. A threefold cord is not easily broken. The note I have is in the phrase of the threefold cord is not quickly broken. It's stating that it's, a clear, it's clear that Solomon is pointing out the advantages of companionship. Moreover, he presents this illustration to show how God in mercy provides help to those who depend on him. In Ecclesiastes, which we just read, Solomon explains further by examples how this concept of companionship is beneficial. He shows that there are definite advantages to working together. He also reveals how terrible the circumstances would be if one had to face adversity alone. <coughs> and I think about that. With all the things that were coming up against us, sometimes when that adversity comes up against us, we think we're alone. Amen. That's we right. think... Where's my friends? Where's my family? Where's my God? Amen. We give the enemy power in that moment and stuff like that because our faith wavers. We believe that we alone, instead of taking it to God in faith and trusting and believing that he got us. That's right. That no matter what the situation is, that I'm going to trust God and I know that he's going to bring me through. We have to take that time to understand that there's something I'm supposed to learn from this. Here's another test of my faith. What am I going to do? Yep. Am I going to stand still, stand strong, and stand firm on the word of God and all his promises? Or am I going to wither away and let the enemy have his way? That's right. Mm -hmm. This concept of unity and working together is one that is seen throughout Scripture. I spoke about unity a couple of sermons ago. 
from the time of creation, God provided companionship by making a help me for Adam. That was in Genesis, the second chapter, mm -hmm. verse 18. Even Christ, in the commissioning of his disciples, sent them two by two. You can look in Luke, the 10th chapter, verses 1 through 3. He knew that they would face adversity and persecution from the world. In providing companionship, they would be able to lift one another up and continue the ministry even when they were persecuted. That's that backup. That's that friend thing. Like when we was in the streets back in the day and stuff. And I know that the boys, the brothers I'm running with, they got my back. Mm -hmm. Now I know even more that it was God who had my back and he had their back. Now I don't need anybody. Well, I won't say I won't need anybody else. But now I know who has my back. And as long as God has my back, I don't have nothing to worry about. Mm -hmm. We have to make sure that he has our back. And you better have his back. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And providing companionship, they would be able to lift one another up and continue the ministry even when they were persecuted. The concept of Unity of the body of believers is seen in the books of the New Testament. Phrases like the whole body, joined together and knit together from Ephesians 4 and 16, and have the same care for one another. 1 mm -hmm. Corinthians 12 and 25 adequately explains the ideal that God desires unity among the believers in the church. You can see John 17 and 21. Again, I did a sermon on unity and I spoke about how important that was. Because we go into the churches now, and I'm not judging, I'm not calling nobody out, I'm not throwing no stones. I'm just saying, if we can become united yeah. and be one people, yeah. serving God, not being appointed judges over people, not criticizing because what they driving, where they live, what they wearing, what they did. If God didn't tell you to worry about it, he said, I got it. He Amen. said, vengeance is mine. He didn't send you or appoint any of us to go after anybody and take care of anybody for what they did. He called us to come together in unity and be one people under him Amen. so that he could empower his church to go forth and cleanse the land, to free the people, to serve the one and living true God. Amen. We got to be united. That's the enemy's, one of the enemy's greatest weapons is keeping us separated by class, by money, by so many different things. Look at us just at work alone, how disunited we are. When we're supposed to be a team in working together as a team and one person is doing this and one person is doing that or you can't tell me what to do or I can't we got to be united we can accomplish more when we become one united group especially if that's a united group under God When I think about unity with God, when I think about being a friend with God, I always think about the time when I always ask God, God, I'd be like, when I think about Adam and Eve, I think about them walking in the garden with God. Can you just imagine that? Mm -hmm. Can you just picture that, dude? We're not talking about with God in the garden. <laughs> dude, I didn't even have to get up early in the morning to go to work. I ain't have to do nothing. I can hang out with my girl, my, just me and her, and then God. What more could we want? But we know what happened with that. I had spoke already about Genesis. I put Genesis, the third chapter, eighth verse. They talk about the fall. 
The man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. I appreciate that cool of the day, especially being here in the south now. And they hid from the Lord among the trees in the garden. How can you hide from God, first of all? <laughs> Where you hide? They messed up that thing that I'm longing to reach. I'm longing to get there. I'm longing to have that intimate relationship with God where he invites me in. He's invited us already to sup at his table. That's when you get in with that relationship with God and you going in and you praying and God invites you to sup at his table. That's the relationship he's telling us this morning. He wants all of us to have He's inviting us to his table to sit down in the presence with him so he can show us how much he loves us. Not wait for Thanksgiving, not wait for Christmas, but I'm inviting you to my table because I love you. I got something I got to pour into you, something I want to give you. We don't invite everybody to our table. We don't break bread with everybody. That's right. But if God is opening up that door and inviting you to that table, don't miss your opportunity. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Thank I want to keep on getting those invitations. When I think about relationship with God, I think about 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter, the 6th verse. They were talking about the power and the might are in your hand. And no one can withstand you. Said our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? And in verse 7, it explained a little more, bit more. It said, Lord, the God of our ancestors, you are not the God, you are not the God who is in heaven. You rule over all the kingdoms of the nation. Power and might are in your hand and no one can withstand you. So again, I just think about Jesus. those times when obstacles came up against us and we weren't able to move forward, but we had friends who helped us, who kept us lifted up and we were able to move forward. Amen. The last part of the fret well, it's not the last. I think about John, third chapter in 29. John testifying about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Says the bride belongs to the bridegroom. The friend who attends the bridegroom waits and listens for him. And is full of joy when he hears the bridegroom's voice. That joy is mine and it's now complete. I think about that friend, when I see my friend and stuff and how happy I am to see him. We think about the bride and the bridegroom. Dom's my bride and stuff. We'd be Jesus' bride, God's bride when we come and meet him in heaven. I think about James 4.4. 4. When he says, you adulterous people, don't you know that friend, that friendship with the world means enmity against God? Mm -hmm. Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Mm -hmm. How we have to submit ourselves to God and not prioritize about the things of the world. Mm -hmm. Not concentrate. As I've said over and over again, forget about ourselves and just concentrate on him. Mm -hmm. He said, thou shalt have no other God before me. When we keep pushing these things that we want, the things that we strive for before God's plans. I think I shared that this week. And my brother Oswald Chambers, he said about making plans. We keep making all of these plans, but we never stop and take a moment to see what plans that God has for us. Do we wake up in the morning and ask God, what is it that you would have me to do this morning? Mm -hmm. Who 
Who am I supposed to sow into this morning? Who do you want me to pray for this morning? Whatever it is you want to, wherever it is you want to send me, whatever it is that you got me to do. If we're getting ready for work, is there somebody at work? Is there somebody on the way? Mm -hmm. We pull into the gap, whatever it is. I remember one time my wife and I went to the supermarket. We was going to pick up something. I forgot what it was. And we was in the aisle and this gentleman had stage four cancer. <clears throat> and we struck up a conversation over something. And he started sharing what was going on with him and what the doctors pronounced over him. And he was saying that he was going in for a surgery tomorrow. And I just felt that God said, pray for him. So I asked him, I said, you mind if I pray for you in aisle eight, whatever it was in the supermarket? We was right there, didn't That's care about who was there. That's right. We just went in. That's right. People looking at us, doesn't matter. We went in and lifted this brother up in the name of Jesus. And he lifted up his hands in believing. And I said, the God we serve is so strong and so good that if you believe in faith, I believe you won't even have to have that surgery tomorrow. That when they go in tomorrow and stuff and look to see if there's still something there, they can be so confounded because that which they went to fix is no longer there. Because if you believe in faith with all your heart, and if it's the will of God, he'll eradicate it. Amen. And what a powerful testimony that would be. <coughs> he was thankful. He said, are you a pastor? I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> he said, before he left the hospital, a man came into his room and said he was a pastor and could he pray for him? Mm -hmm. So this man, another pastor, prayed for him before he got out the hospital. Now he was in the hospital, he was getting insurance. They told him to drink insurance to build up his body and stuff. And I said, well, God is, to me, that says God is trying to tell you something. He had the pastor at the hospital come and minister to you. Right. And here we are in the grocery store just trying to pick up something. But God is telling me that I got to pray for this brother to help you through. So what do you think God is trying to tell you to do? If he ain't trying to get your attention and telling you, dude, trust me. Amen. And watch Amen. and see what I'm going to do. Amen. I understand what the doctor said, but I'm God. Amen. He's God. Amen. And he has the final say so. That's that friendship, that's that love, that's that fellowship that only comes from God. In my other Bible, it had the rewards of um, partnership. Partnership and friendships are the same. There's some discrepancies with that, but it's like-minded. It says most they use the word leaders. This is the, uh, what you call it? Maxwell. Thank you, baby. The Maxwell Leadership Bible. In the Maxwell Leadership Bible, it always has these little great nuggets. And instead of leaders, I'm just going to change it to God's people. Most of God's people recognize they need partnerships to reach big goals. Note the rewards of a healthy partnership. Partners accomplish more. Amen. Mm -hmm. Partners complement each other. That's right. That's good. Partners support and comfort and warmth. Partners give strength to each other. Mm -hmm. All of those was in those for, those verses from Ecclesiastes, the fourth chapter, verses nine through eleven. That's the kind of partnership that I want. I thank God that he blessed me with the partnership with my wife. Good friends who we call family and stuff like yes, that. Right. But that partnership that I want more than anything else is the partnership with God. Mm -hmm. So he can have his way and do according to do with me as he see fit. Use me in any way that he wants. Because he's just been so good to me. 
He's been so good to me. I had a note in my Bible written in there. I got it from somewhere, in some class somewhere. It said the foxhole principle. And, it, and I, I, I'm sharing it because, again, it's talking about friendship. And someone taught me that the foxhole principle says, when preparing for battle, dig a foxhole that's big enough for your friend. Mm. Mm. Now think about that. Amen. That's good. When you prepare for battle, dig a foxhole that's big enough for your friend. Oh, that's it. We'll just let that rest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I got to share my brother Oswald Chambers. Amen. Resting in the Lord is not dependent on our external circumstances at all but in our relationship with God himself. I think I shared that on Facebook this week. Mm -hmm. And winding this up and saying, is Jesus a friend of ours? Or do we keep him in a glass box with a sign stating, break glass in case of emergency? Mm -hmm. And then we call on him to do Whatever it is, whatever situation we need him to get us out of. Or do we continually call on the name of Jesus and be in fellowship with him? Lifting up his name. Thanking him for his sacrifice. Thank you, Jesus. Understanding that he wants a relationship with yes. us. Yes. That he wants to bless us, just in a nutshell, just love on us like no one else can possibly love on us. Mm -hmm. I mean, as husbands, we appreciate the love of our wives. Yes. But when you get that love of God, the love of Jesus, the Holy Spirit just pouring into you. Is something you never want to be without. Mm -hmm. That's why we share. Mm -hmm. That's why we come and meet on Sunday so that we can share and fellowship with our brothers and sisters so we can get them to understand you no longer have to be in bondage. Mm -hmm. Today, all you have to do is surrender to the love of God. And let him free you up. Yes. All he's asking is for that fellowship. He's not going to force you. He could do that if he wanted to. Time and time again, he's given us the whole Old, Old Testament. You just think about is time and time again. He's given us so many different chances. I don't know how we as a people made it past the Old Testament. When God just kept forgiving us, I mean, he took out a lot of people too. <coughs> because of our disobedience. But we can't switch places with him. But if you just think about it, all the good things that he was doing and he was showing the people, and time after time again, they went back to these little stupid statues and, and doing this dumb stuff when God was performing these miracles that would have just blown my mind. I mean, like, dude, I you got me. I'm with you. But we want to fall back or get corrupted because homie says, yo, this, whatever. That's how much he loves us. There's a relationship with God that's unlike anything else. You need that relationship to walk in peace. You need that relationship for good health. You need that relationship to lead your family. You need that relationship to be an example to your children. You need that relationship for our job. Whatever ministry he's called you for, you need, we all need that relationship with God. And today he's asking you, break the glass. Mm. Don't put them on hold. Mm -hmm. Don't put them in a box. Don't count on Reverend such and such I can call up when my son is going to the hospital. Um, 
they fired me or whatever and stuff like that. What if, um, somebody is sick, or I can always call on Reverend such and such because they have a hotline to God and, and God hears their prayer. Did you take it to God first in prayer? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Did we get down on bended knees and understand the relationship that we have? Because mm -hmm. God has no favorites. Mm -hmm. He loves us all the same, but all he wants yeah. us to do is to submit, bow down, and seek his face first. Mm -hmm. It's nothing wrong with going and asking for the, 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 the family to keep you lifted up in prayer. Right, right. But we have to go to him first. Amen. That's where I'm going first. When mom was sick, that's the first thing we did. After we got off the phone and stuff like that, Dom and I went into prayer. We prayed. When two or three are together, God is in the midst. Amen. And we thank God that she's home today. We're not claiming that we healed her. God is in control. We say, God, have your way. Mm. You know the situation. Relieve the pain. Yes. Help your daughter through whatever's going on, Lord God. Jesus. Send your healing, Lord God. Mm. Whatever's needed, Lord God. Be in the midst. Release now in the name of Jesus. That's how we go in with that relationship. Right. Believing in faith that he got it. That's right. And when we got the good report by the end of the night that she's back home in her bed, we thank God. When she's not hurting anymore, we thank God. I'm thanking God this morning for my relationship with him. Even in my disobedience, he never abandoned me or forsaken me. Okay. He's always there. Yeah. As I said, from the Old Testament, time and time again, he's given us so many chances, I done lost count. <laughs> I'm talking about me. I don't know about anybody else. I'm talking about me. I done lost count. I don't know if I was in his place when I had gave, given myself all the chances that he's given me. And look where he's got me today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm nobody special. All it is is about our relationship with him and walking in faith and believing that God is who he says he is. That he mm -hmm. sacrificed his son mm -hmm. so that we can have life and have it good. Yes. Amen. God gives. God supplies. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is trust and believe. Please make sure today that you have a relationship with God. Thank you. Amen. Amen.